Welcome to Machines More. The Max Gray reminds me a lot of the gray on the nose and the wings of the Supermarine Spitfire. It's a Royal Air Force fighter from World War II, so yeah, Spitfire here. I'll talk through the parts and the build, some tips if you're also planning a build in this case, and then I'll share some thermal benchmarks to close. Uh, the core build components here aren't the same ones migrated over from the Meshlicious Tradewinds build. It's got an Asus B550ITX motherboard, the 5800X, and the 3070FE, but different cooling components, and obviously the Max has a different layout. The Max does come with a 280 AIO, and okay, it may not make much financial sense to buy a Max and then take out the 280 to do a custom loot build, but you don't really do this kind of thing for value to begin with, right? But uh, you really do get a good sense of just how long the custom tubes are uh, for this case when it's completely removed. Isn't that crazy? The V850 SFX power supply is completely fine for this build, and the only thing I did was to add the Molex PSU cable for the pump, and that cable is included in the accessory box. I wanted to get an idea of the maximum clearance that you can get on the top, and if you just look at the height alone, that's around the 65 millimeters for this combo here with the T30s and the XSPC EX240. Uh, since the limiting point is the top of that power plug from the power supply, in fact, it sits right on top of it. However, if you use the headers at the top of your motherboard, there is going to be some interference from that part uh, of the board because those headers will not be impeded by the radiator and the fan. So what I had to do was shift out the 240 rad to the front slot where you normally mount a 280. Now it's not great, but uh, it is held on by two screws still and the other end is supported by the power supply anyway. So if you're planning on a 280 though, I'd say the reasonable upper limit for thickness would be something more like 60 millimeters. Moving down the bottom, originally I was planning on doing a 120 right here, but uh, since that's the only space you have for a fan anyway. But uh, after starting to build, I changed course and went with a 240 anyway because the ports for a 120 would be in an awkward location and I didn't want the ports exiting out the front side of the case. So I swapped in an ultra thin XS PC TX240 and that places the ports in a more optimal location at the rear of the case. And for the bottom fan, I'm just using the Chromax Noctua NFA 12 by 25. And you will have to cinch up your PSU cables pretty tight to clear that fan. And no, between the riser cable and the top of that radiator, there's absolutely no space for anything. For the fans, I ran them all as intake in order to pass the coolest air through the rent. And that creates a system that will exhaust out the back when using that glass panel. Because of the location of the Max's power plug though, it interferes with the bottom radiator and the one mod, if you can even call it that, was just to unscrew it and use it more as a pigtail assembly, which isn't as elegant as I would have liked, but it's the most reasonable fuss-free solution. For the CPU block, I'm using the EK Velocity. In Tradewinds, I use the Optimus Foundation AM4 block, which is also a great block, but I wanted the cascading layers of light in this build, so the DRGB Velocity is what I went with. The 3070FE uses the EK Vector block. This block has the ports exiting uh, and entering at the end. And the shorter block and the cart is a huge benefit here because it allows the full combo pump res to be mounted right next to it. So that block connects to what might be my new favorite pump, the EK FLT80. And I'm pairing this res with a DDC pump. This pump is really awesome for this build because it slots in perfectly right on the side of the NR200 and it screws into the front panel. The two mounting holes on the side of the pump require absolutely no drilling or brackets with the NR200 because they're standard spacing and uh, Cooler Master has already prepped for that. It also has a small footprint and still takes a full size D5 or DDC pump and the helpful part is that you can have these side ports which exit out the left. So I would wholeheartedly recommend this unit for any NR200 build or other SFF custom loops, but especially here since the uh, ports are optimal for this case. Uh, behind the pump, you still have a good amount of space between this and the power supply, so you uh, could use a D5 pump if you wanted here. Um, it's also small enough that you could use it externally, not in this particular layout, but for example, at the back of the NR200 or an N-Case M1 Classic. This loop starts from the pump and it enters the top radiator and then that feeds the CPU block which connects to the bottom radiator and then feeds the GPU block and then it returns to the pump. To make the build easy, you can take out the rad plates at the top and that's uh, great for letting you play with the placement and the fittings for screwing everything in place. 
And because the Max is vertical GPU layout, which impedes access to the motherboard, it's a really good idea to work on the CPU side and the connection to those radiators first. So that's what I did. And I unfortunately was one fitting short for this build. So I had to sub in uh, one from a different set, which it's okay because I could hide it behind the block. All good there. After that, I looped the GPU block in and actually the removable GPU bracket, I didn't think it would be useful, but it was uh, not for attaching to the GPU, but uh, it allowed me to remove that space completely, which allowed extra room for tinkering and maneuvering the block into place. I had rinsed the GPU block out, but it still had a little bit of the precipitate from the uh, solid cryofuel, but I'll give it a little more of a thorough cleanup later on. And uh, I'm still using the same type of coolant here, so it's, it's okay. To give it a little bit more visual structure, I did these two 90 degree bends here uh, in front. I think it works out well here. The tubing is EK's DuraClear 1216. I think Softline is much more ideal for this type of build since you do have to get in and uh, behind a lot of things and something like ZMT would also be great here if you just want a workhorse tubing. I did go with a hard connection here though from the, the return from the GPU block to the pump because it was a little bit too short to meaningfully do another tubing section. So I just use an adjustable extender here and it, it seems to work fine. Coolant is EK solid cryofuel in purple. I think it looks really striking in this build, but just about any color could go well with this neutral case color. And lastly, there is a 10K temp probe hiding in the back of the GPU port and that connects onto the motherboard for uh, temperature monitoring. Since the GPU and the CPU are the same as Tradewinds, we can do a pretty good uh, comparison. Now it's worth noting that I used what I would consider to be a much better RAD in the Meshi build. The Hardware Labs GTS240 is one of the best in class for its thickness and the EX240 I used here mostly out of convenience because I wanted to go with the T30s and I didn't have longer M4 screws handy for the thicker fans. Plus the only other 240 rads I have free are all thick boys like the uh, PE240 and uh, the XR7. So the EX240 is a pretty average rad, but we are pairing with two of the best 120 millimeter fans and an additional fan uh, right here is the best 25 millimeter fan right now. So how does it stack up? Well, noise normalized for CPU only with the 5800X locks to 4.7 gigahertz on all cores and 1.325 volts. Uh, PPT is about 126, 127 watts here. Interestingly, it's mostly the same in terms of performance. Granted, these are two different CPU blocks, but if we look at the equilibrium coolant temps, they are mostly the same. T30s are running at about 1600 RPM here with that NFA 12x25 at 1700 RPM. And this was compared to the X3Ms, which are fairly noisy at 1500 RPM. When we move over to a GPU only situation, 220 watts from this GPU and with the same fan speeds, the coolant temp for the max is coming in a little bit lower, but uh, with higher GPU temps here. And despite the pump running at the same RPM in both cases at about 3,400 RPM, that increased restriction from this extra radiator and the more convoluted flow path here may in fact be responsible for that. Nonetheless, they're very similar. And at this point, we're splitting hairs uh, with the GPU temps since the performance, unless you're overclocking, it's going to be pretty identical at this level. And despite having this third fan, the Max actually didn't gain too much in terms of headroom uh, for an all systems go scenario where the fans are at 100% and the GPU and CPU are simultaneously max loaded. Again, the Max is exhibiting lower coolant temps, but again, the theory here is that the lower fluid speed does result in similar performance on this CPU with uh, slightly worse performance for the GPU. One potential improvement I might try is just sealing off this empty space right here uh, on the radiator to prevent the reintake uh, of the exhaust air uh, because the positive pressure will cause air to come out uh, through the bottom of the case here and it gets sucked back in. And that'll force all the exhaust to the back of the case. The T30s do work very well at lower RPM, so in real world used for something like gaming, uh, what you'll get here is a dead quiet system with very good performance and for a silent system at sub 900 rpm these are very decent thermals visually i think you can make an argument for either the way you display the nr200 is a little bit more limiting if you want to see inside but the view from here is just so spectacular there's these cascading layers of intrigue and it kind of leads the eye into the build from here in and it makes for a very stunning build also. 
So financial considerations aside, a custom loop in the Max is very competent and you should absolutely be fine for gaming builds, uh, even with a more powerful RTX 3080 in here. But uh, what the meshlishes can do with just one single 240 is still very impressive. Uh, it'll be in a future iteration of the mesh, but I will revisit that type of loop setup uh, with better fans in the future. As for this build, I'm not planning on keeping it running for very long because I am uh, doing a different project in the OG NR200. And if what you're looking for is mostly a mod-free dual rad build experience, I think this Max is to ticket. But if you're willing to mess around a little bit, I think uh, that upcoming project will make a bit more sense for many of you, so please look for that in your future and give a like if you enjoyed this one today. Subscribe, links for the components are down below. Thanks for watching.